Welcome to Martini Time. I want you to see, look, I found a new uh, martini glass. Uh, actually, I didn't find uh, it. was one my uncle left me, but I mean, they've, uh, it was on a shelf uh, that I had forgotten about. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, it's a rising snake. And so I thought I would talk about uh, Kundalini, uh, which is a snake that rises up through the spine as spiritual energy. And uh, so this, uh, um, this is a very, this is a nice metal one. It's very heavy and sturdy. So um, I'll be using this for a little bit. Helps bring my Kundalini energy up. So this, this energy is, crea is creative energy. Uh, in India, see, so in India, uh, the uh, cobra snake, which is the uh, 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 a sacred animal in India, if you have a cobra in your garden, you're, it's very auspicious. And uh, when I just just the side track, when I was uh, uh, when we went to Ganeshpuri uh, in 1980 uh, to stay with uh, uh, Swami Muktananda up here and uh, uh, he was a, a Siddha Yogi who, whose uh, power was to raise the Kundalini, the spiritual energy and, there were, and the ashram was uh, behind a big uh, kind of a, a ice cream cone mountain and they had uh, have a winding path all the way up there and with statues all along uh, statues of the gods uh, in India the, uh, the story of the gods are told in statues so the uh, so the so the all the different gods and goddesses are portrayed in statues, and they carry um, well, like this one here. I bought this in Bombay when we were in India that time, and uh, so this is Ganesh, the threshold guardian, and you can see he's got all these different tools. Everything in this little statue is part of the story of Ganesh. And uh, uh, actually, this is a threshold guardian uh, that uh, guards the entrance to the Garden of Eden, <laughs> so to speak. If you want to cross-pollinate the, cross the mythologies of Christianity and yoga, uh, the threshold guardian uh, guards the entrance to the church, those gargoyles, or he guards the entrance to uh, he's the cherubims that guard the entrance to uh, the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life, and uh, he's the dragon that guards the treasure and the trail, uh, a cave. So this guardian uh, god, you see, is even the guru, and so uh, you have to go through the guardian uh, to get to the treasure, and you have to be ready. So there's a discipline, there's a pilgrimage, there's a uh, uh, penance. All of this stuff that we know about, but we get scattered out throughout the religions, and we don't really understand it uh, in our own personal life. Like, uh, if I want to get to my full potential, um, I have to get a guide. So we get books, you get to a self-help thing, you go on the internet and hook up with some teacher, or you get some books. Uh, whatever you got to get the teaching. If you want to fix your bike, you have to get a manual. If you buy a new uh, uh, power generator, uh, you got to get a manual to it. So all the machines we get have manuals, but there are no manuals for the Kundalini machine. You see, that's not on our map. So now we have to go to India for these maps. Or Buddhism uh, is a map for the Kundalini. All these spiritual traditions are interior maps to awaken this spiritual energy of creativity that breaks through barriers, it punches its way through membranes, you know, like uh, uh, even, even you, you, you know, the punching through the, the membrane, even eroticism is connected with them. Eroticism is punching through a barrier, uh, you know, so everything uh, you know, all of these symbols and all of these myths, you know, are all interrelated and interconnected to the same thing on different levels. And in our Western society, everything is fragmented and smashed, you know. It's like Humpty Dumpty is just broken up, see. So I really have to, we really have to make an effort to integrate 
the mythologies, integrate the fragments so that we can become whole and see life as interrelated instead of in compartments. See, the West has been successful because it compartmentalizes. Oh, you got the science there, and you got the religion there, and even science gets broken up into compartments. You got your biology, your physics, and all of that, you see, and you study one, and you don't understand the others, you see. Education used to be uh, what was called the educating of the Renaissance man. Uh, the Renaissance man's, our best model for that was Thomas Jefferson. But the educated person integrated all learning, you see. But now learning and knowledge has gotten so immense and so complex and so the library has gotten so big, it had to be compartmentalized because nobody can learn it all. Of course, the internet is coming along and that's changing things. Uh, because now you've got an integrating machine. The internet is an integrating. So you can integrate anything on the internet by just clicking. So anyway, and that's a creative process. So this kundalini in the yoga psychology is coiled at the base of the spine and there are seven chakras or centers of consciousness and each center of consciousness exhibits a certain uh, bent or worldview or way of being in the world. So the, the, uh, the base chakra is the reptilian or, the, uh, or just the fun survival, people who live just, uh, just to survive. And then there's the uh, sexual uh, chakra, which is people who live for sex. And then you have the power center at the navel, the people who live for power. And then there is a heart chakra. Now this is a turning point. So when the energy gets to the heart and begins to open, your life begins to change and you begin to unify instead of, instead of uh, uh, divide. The, the first three chakras are basically about me as ego. And so everything is related to the power stations of the ego in society and in, in my personal life. But then the heart chakra and then the throat chakra and the ajna uh, chakra here are the next three spiritual chakras. And then the crown, the shajra, is the opening uh, to the uh, light of awareness. And so there are many experiences recorded when these chakras are broken and penetrated by this energy. And when everyone is penetrated, your life changes. You're in a different way of being in the world. Uh, so this is a very handy uh, manual uh, in the yoga psychology, you know, for uh, mapping out the stages of, of the evolution of consciousness. And so, uh, you know, so, uh, but, but uh, uh, the West, you know, has, de has taken the snake in Genesis and the snake was uh, wrapping around the tree of life and Eve and the snake were consorts, and the snake and Eve were uh, de uh, 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 not demented. Uh, are de are searching for a word? They were they were demoted. <laughs> they were they were responsible for the uh, evil in the world. You see, or the sin. Uh, you know. So this. Uh, instead of being uh, the snake and the goddess uh, in uh, yoga, in the Eastern philosophy, uh, the goddess uh, Shakti, uh, her consort is the snake. And uh, uh, because the snake is the consort of the goddess, because uh, the snake sheds its skin, it dies and is resurrected. So in the same way, you see, uh, excuse me, uh, Jesus is the consort of the goddess and Mother Mary. This is her son. The son of Mary is the dying and resurrected son. And so the goddess in the ancient mythologies always had a dying and resurrected son. And these, this dying and resurrected son was symbolically represented by the snake because it shed its skin and by the bull with the horns of the moon and the moon itself because the moon uh, 
died and was resurrected. The moon wanes and waxes. Dying and resurrected, you see. And the seasons die and are resurrected. So the seasons are born in the spring and they die in the fall and they're resurrected in the, in the uh, spring, you see. So the cycle of earth, the dying and resurrection, was associated with the goddess, the mother earth, the dying and resurrected sun, and sacrifice. So you had to sacrifice in order to get the seasons to return. If you didn't make a sacrifice, well, then the spring wouldn't come back. The moon wouldn't come back. The sun wouldn't come back, you see. So these cycles, had, you want the man had to participate in the cycles of the earth in order to make them happen. So these, these uh, uh, religions developed great sacrificial, sacrificial sacrifices, your sacrificial rites. And uh, the the uh, participation in the rites made the kundalini happen. And the same way with uh, yoga and all that. So, oh, so you want to, there's a lot of kundalini yogas out there. Uh, yogas that are uh, basically, uh, their purpose is to awaken and guide the kundalini up through its Shirts and and the uh, the kundalini. Let me see. I have a symbol of that. But the you know the uh, the symbol of the uh, of medicine, American medicine, is the uh, uh, two snakes. The two smith snakes coiled around uh, a cross. You see, the two snakes and then the center shaft. And so this uh, this this is the symbol right there of the uh, of the uh, shishuma, which is the center channel that the kundalini goes up and the ida and the pingali are the two circling nerves and so the the uh, energy has to be forced up through the chimney just like Santa Claus <laughs> so, <laughs> so all of the symbolism is uh, is fragmented but it's all unified and so my, you know, what I do basically is that I study this and I learn this and I'm interested in it and I'm curious about it, and I find that uh, that the that the uh, understanding uh, and peace and understanding and peace and creativity comes when you can integrate instead of fragment and compartmentalize. So the so the awakening of the Kundalini is also the awakening of the. Uh, capacity of the mind to integrate reality instead of reducing and dividing. Integrate, 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 making whole. Making That's what the heart chakra does. It makes whole, you see, what was fragmented. And all of the religious, you know, the baking of the bread, uh, the Christian symbolism, you see, Christ makes whole. And then you have the Eucharist, the Mass, you know, where the uh, bread is broken, and then uh, the Christ principle makes it whole. So all of these symbols, all this mythology, all this religion, secular and religion, all of it does the same thing. All of it points, all of it is metaphorical pointing to you and to your own uh, creative awakening. Because when we awaken, we unify. When we awaken, all of the pieces of me come together. All of my past makes sense. All of my fragmented relationships, all of my compartmentalization of time uh, becomes present, you see. So we really have to see our culture as a fragmentation. Our culture is broken into little pieces. Then we live from one piece to another. I go to work on one piece, I come home on another piece. Then I try to get some time for myself and then that the kid cries and the dog howls and I'm pissed off and then I try to uh, uh, have a vacation and then the boss calls and so this constant trying to get uh, uh, a little space in my little compartment then the world keeps intruding because the world is one <laughs> but we keep trying to break it up you see so this whole awakening this energy this kundalini this uh, this rising of awareness through the layers of the mind all points to peace of mind all points to 
integration, unity. That's what the, that's what the heart, uh, that's the power of the heart, you see, versus the mind. The mind fragments, the mind divides, the mind reduces, the mind analyzes. The mind is a surgeon. The heart is a, is a uh, uh, puts everything back together. Never divides. Mind judges, heart loves. So these two in our society are separated, but it's up to us in our individual life to, to unite them, to make the heart and the mind one. But you see, the, the heart uh, must be awakened. Uh, because, and the mind can't do it. You can't make yourself love. The mind can't, by willpower, uh, make yourself love. Um, so there's something that needs to happen to awaken the heart uh, so that this kundalini energy begins to rise. It stirs. Uh, let me, I'll tell you, when the, when the kundalini moves, uh, you feel it. A good story I was telling about this little ice cream cone mountain behind the ashram at Ganeshpuri. So my wife and two kids, we walked up the hill and somebody says, Watch, uh, keep an eye out for the king cobra <laughs> that lives there. King cobra. King cobra. So we're walking up this little trail and we hear this rustling in the bushes coming down the hill. And the hair on the back of our necks turns up. We feel the electricity, feel the shakti, the electricity. And we turn and right a few feet behind us, this fire hose, it must have been that thick, was going across the trail behind us so fast. I mean, it was moving fast. And, and hair on our head stood up. Wow. And so we went back to the ashram and said we saw the king. Oh, how auspicious. Oh, how auspicious to see that king cobra, you see. <laughs> now, what a way to look at that, you see, versus, uh, oh, my God, I'm getting out of here. I'm going back to America. <laughs> you see. So... The whole world is our playground when we can see the world through an integrated eye. The whole world is a playground for us when we can see the world through the heart and through the integration and see everything in reference to our awakening. Everything is a help. Everything is a guide. Everything is a guru. Everything is a threshold guardian. Everything is removing obstacles to our awakening. But if we don't see it that way, then we see everything as an obstacle. We see everything as an obstacle, a threat to be removed, to be feared, you see. That's because we're down in the lower chakras, seeing everything in terms of uh, sex, power, or survival. So if you see everything in terms of sex, power, and survival, everything's a threat. Everything is something to be, it's going to either eat you or you're going to eat it. That's it. You're living on that level. You either eat everything or it's going to eat you. And it's always going to be both. <laughs> you don't escape. You don't get out of this without being eaten. You see. But then when the membrane is broken through, when you break through to the upper three levels, you see, everything shifts then. Instead of everything being broken and compartmentalized in a threat, everything is incoming. Instead of everything being outgoing, oh, I'm losing it, you see. You see, and everything, you take this, you see, and we turn this up and say, oh, I've only got so much sand here. Oh, my God. I'm losing life, time. Everything is going away from me. Everything is going through my fingers. I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing everything. i got to hang on to my money, my age, my body. I'm hanging on. Oh, everything is lost, you see. But at the same time, when the heart shifts, you're here. <laughs> now everything is incoming you see everything is coming in I'm blessed, I'm full, I'm being increased everything is coming in 
But then on the other side of the shift, oh no, I'm losing everything. Oh no, I'm dying. I'm losing. Lose, lose. I can't, no matter what I do, I lose. No matter what I do, I gain. No matter what I do, I win. No matter what I do, I'm increased. Oh no, I'm losing. Oh, everything is gone. Oh no. Oh, everything is coming in. It's the same world, different viewpoint. Same reality, different viewpoint, you see. There is a shift. Everything flips. Everything flips. But you can't make that happen, you see. You can't make the flip happen from here. Because then all you're doing is saying, well, I'll flip in order to get everything for me. Well, it doesn't work that way. How do you get it to flip, you see? Well, even here, if I flip it, I'm still losing. <laughs> I'm almost empty now. I'm almost gone, you see. So no matter how I try to flip, I'm still up here. I'm still losing. So trying to flip, trying to make the kundalini rise, trying to make yourself awaken, doesn't work. So when you come to the point, I forgot to put on my time, so I don't know how much time I've got. I wish you would, uh, wish you would remind me to bring that in. I forget. So that's because these talks are timeless in a way. Um, so anyway, I hope I hope I, I didn't tell you to do anything. I didn't tell you how to do anything. I'm just trying to give you a sense of uh, how to see, how to see. If you can learn how to see, you flip. If you learn how to see from an integrated view, everything flips from a fragmented to an integrated. And that only happens when you actually see that the fragmented way is not working. When you actually see that all your strategies are not working. When you actually see that there is no way to flip it. There is no way to win. There is no way to uh, flip time. Uh, to flip the hourglass, you see. There is no way. But then that's the way. <laughs> you see. <laughs> when you give up trying to flip, it flips. But first you have to give up control. You have to give up prediction and control, which is the Western way. So it's not easy. Thanks for dropping in. <laughs>